Thanks, Mark. Um, I want to start off, I want to use the word imagine quite a few times over the next eight to ten minutes. And I want you to imagine a home with no central heating. Um, some of my extended family have just actually had central heating put in. But uh, imagine a home with no central heating. Imagine the benefits that has, not just to the homeowner, not just to the house builder, not just to the lender, um, not just to the environment and the government, but uh, just imagine the benefits of not having a central heating system. Imagine a painted specification that's so efficient that it allows its central heating system to be designed out of a building. An economic tipping point is reached where uh, the additional capital cost of insulation and air tightness is offset by the cost of a central heating infrastructure. Imagine keeping um, <clears throat> the build within conventional construction, not putting tradesmen outside their comfort zones, not um, trying to reinvent the wheel, but coming at it from a different angle, all to serve a purpose which is a little bit like dropping a, a pebble in a pond. There are so many benefits to so many individuals, to so many different organizations, to government bodies, and to, to our environment. Um, designing a central heating system out of the equation. Taking it a step further, <clears throat> looking at a building fabric approach. There's a lot of uh, talk about renewable energies, wind turbines, ground source heat pumps, air source heat pumps. And what you find is, yes, in, the, in a like-for-like like running cost, there is an argument where they can be cheaper uh, than conventional gas or, or, or oil, oil bills. However, the capital cost of these technologies, I'm sure you'll all agree, are quite high. So what we have tried to do is, is, is look at a, a fabric-first approach. Let, imagine reducing the heat losses down to an absolute minimum, where a very small room heater could be enough to heat your whole home. And the next slide uh, I want to, to show you is, 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 is potentially some of the benefits of houses that, are, that families are living in, not having to worry about the cost of fossil fuels or the cost of biomass fuels. Starting at the start, um, we have had uh, the privilege of working with Habitat for Humanity, who deliver uh, quality, affordable homes in Northern Ireland. Um, fuel poverty is a big issue. In fact, 40% of the UK will find themselves in fuel poverty over the next five years, and they might not even know it, because the cost of energy is increasing. It may increase one year, it may come down slightly the next, but if you take it over a 10, 15 year period, there's only one way uh, fuel is going and that's up. So the first example is, a, is, a, is a, a typical social house, three bedroom townhouse in Belfast, where the heat losses in the coldest months of the year are 250 watts an hour, 260 watts an hour, and that's whole house heat loss. Compared to our conventional houses, say, that, 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 that um, require maybe 40 or 50 kilowatts an hour. The benefits to the individuals, not having to worry about the cost of fuel, not having to worry about feeding the gas meter or, or, or filling the oil tank, and I'm sure a fill of oil at the moment is about between five and seven hundred pounds, depending on where you live, depending on the quantities, of course. But the benefits of having something like that, not just disposable income, but quality of life. As we move down the list, we get into slightly bigger houses, demonstrating that, that what used to be um, affordable to people who can build big houses can actually also be implemented to the people who need it the most. Um, it's important that when we look at fuel poverty, it's about trying to design out the problem and not trying to incorporate more capital outlay. And, and, and as a result of, of, of a home with no central heating, the benefits are, are exponential. And then the fight against the cost of uh, fuel, fossil fuels, biomass fuels, everything is actually linked to the price of oil. So what you'll find is if, if oil, a barrel of oil goes up in price, within a few months, the price of fossil fuel, or sorry, the, the price of biomass fuels will also increase in price because everything is linked to the price of oil. No maintenance costs towards servicing central heating systems. You just designed out the issue. More disposable income, better quality of life, and of course, no risk of falling into the fuel poverty bracket and effectively future-proofing a house as we move towards our carbon neutral deadlines of 2016. 
let's just take a step back and look at the bigger benefits. Imagine being in the, the mortgage industry or a bank. One of the big variables at the moment is, is again, the cost of fuel. The rising cost of fuels put pressure on, um, on families. Uh, that disposable income is getting squeezed on a year-by-year -year basis. Looking at the, 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 the benefits to, for example, a house builder, um, the government are, have set really stringent targets in, 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 in meeting carbon neutral deadlines by 2016. Again, designing out a central heating system can, it, it gives you a path in which you can affordably um, meet these deadlines without the actual capital costs that are associated with this type of uh, level of, 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 of performance. And really, um, looking at the environment, what we have done is we have taken out the, the single greatest energy carbon emitter in the house, and that can only be a benefit to, 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 to doing our bit for the environment, global warming, and, and, and as a collective, reducing our carbon emissions. My presentation is very short and sweet, and I wanted to keep it very simple, but I'll just leave you with that thought. Thank you.